Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Um, this is going to be part four of the Eggmobile build and we're nearly there. Um, I'll probably have just one more part after this. We'll get it done and you can see in the background I've got my other two Eggmobiles. I've actually sold this one here. It's going away at the weekend. Um, I'm going to hold on to the other one. So it's going to go to a new home and get someone else started up in pasture poultry. Uh Just doing some work in the office here and I've got loads of I've always been into Legos and Connects and Meccanos and you know that's right I developed the skills that I'm using to build this Eggmobile a long long time ago um, you know my engineering skills I started developing all those when I was a kid um, and it's through playing with these kinds of toys um, that it just develops my thinking around engineering how to problem solve um, and how to be good with my hands and uh, yeah um, I've always kept these and sometimes when I'm bored I use these for dummying up if I need to like make gearboxes or play with ideas sometimes I'll just strip some parts off some of the Lego here and have a little play around with my head so I can think about how I'd make it practical um, so if you've got kids, um, buy them meaningful gifts that'll teach them life skills. And, you know, I'm, a lot of the times in my head on the farm, I still think I'm just a big kid or I'm, I'm, I'm just doing things I've done since I was a kid. Uh, so it's always fun to do that. Yeah, we got all our wiring in, got it all tucked up nicely and cleared up. I've just, I'm waiting on one actuator. To go in here, I've got to run a wire over to there and match him up, and everything else will be done down here. Um, all the wires, I just run them to here, but they're all going to run up to here. My box is going to sit just under the battery, and we just got to set up. I'm going to put an external camera on. I'm going to make a bracket to mount the solar panel on the roof up here. I'll put on the cladding first. And I'll put on my solar panel and I'm going to make a bracket to hold another camera so that I can see what's happening outside. And that'll be the majority of our wiring. And the only other thing I'm waiting on is my, I've got my motor. Uh, and I need to wire in my motor for here. Uh, I'm waiting on some... Uh, the word's escaping me now. Um, sprockets. Uh, some... There's a key on the motor and I'm waiting for a sprocket that'll fit the key uh, so we can put a little chain on it to drive it. But yeah, uh, we're getting there. Um, last job to do now before we start to close things up, I'm going to fit in my water lines. Um, there's a couple of things I need to do here. I'm waiting on a pressure reducer to run. Um, this is uh, just nipple drinkers and I, I've got quite a bit of pressure running in my water lines. So I need to put a pressure reducer uh, and first, when the water comes into the Eggmobile, I'll just put a quick release um, on somewhere, maybe around the front here, where I can hook onto it and, and it'll go through a pressure reducer valve or pressure reduction valve. Um, and then it'll run. I'm thinking I'm, putting, I'm going to put a line along the top here, maybe about a foot off the ground. And I'm also going to maybe put more. There's 33 nipples on each of these lines. And for 400 birds, I need more than that. I don't need two. There's enough in this for nearly 600 birds, but I think I'll just stick them in because they're all there and done anyway. Um, I'm not going to use them for anything else. So I'll stick them in. And then I'll probably need to, before I start, I can clad that side then. Uh, no problem. Before I clad this side, I need to uh, tidy up this so that the birds can't jump up here when the nest boxes are tilted out more. So I need to put a bit of one break in here or something, just a bit of a barrier to stop the birds jumping up because uh, I'll have to do the same on the back here. Put something along here to the wall. Um, in fact, I might just put on the sheeting and then figure it out just so the birds don't jump up here and start walking over and back on the eggs. Uh, so yeah, get the water in and start the cladding. I've got all my cladding here. I've got my ply for the top. I've got some clear cladding. I want to let as much light in as possible, so 
uh, I've got every second sheet this clear cladding isn't really ideal stuff because it's pretty light um, so what you do is you put on you put it in between two steel cladding sheets and it's not too bad okay I'm muttering along here nicely um, I've got this bar attached all the way along because what I'm going to do is going to come and I'm going to fix a bit of shade cloth from this bar on to up here and that'll mean then when our nest boxes are further out because I have them extended fully back there when they go down this goes further away and a chicken could jump up in here um, so that shape, that bit of cloth will stop that but it also carries some of our drinkers so there's uh, 21 nipples on there I think and this is going to go down through the floor here i got to get some just half inch pipe and I'm going to put it going to come down here I'm going to put a pressure reducer valve just under here maybe make a little box to protect it and I'm going to have a connection point where I can come along and hook water straight onto it there's also going to be water coming pipe coming along the bottom here and up because I've got a whole bar I've got 30 nipples on the top deck there um, all ready to go so I just need I'm waiting on some plumbing fittings to come I'm just going to tee into that there straight down and then straight across and have a connection point there for my water um, I'm motoring along nicely here one other thing uh, if you remember I just had some cable ties on here so I just fashioned some uh, u-clips for this um, just made it sort of simple this is um, it's expanded steel or it's uh, wall plate tie is what it's used for it's used in construction for fixing roofs to the walls um, but it's very pliable and great for just little ta jobs like that there so now I've got pretty much everything I want to do uh, I don't have any shade cloth with me if I had it I would put it on here I have two bits to do I have to go from here to here and I also have to go from here to the roof somewhere probably straight up and that'll be that done I can do that with the cladding on too it's not a big deal um, so I'm going to start sheeting. I'll probably start on this side, sheet that, then I'll sheet that side. Um, I do need to put the uh, MDF up there. I didn't bring the saw with me. I want to cut the sheets in half to make it easier from taking them out and replacing them with something else. When the roof goes on, um, it, everything's going to have to go out the back door, so I'm going to cut the sheets in half. I didn't bring the saw, so I won't do that job today. But that needs to get done and put in before the roof goes on, just freeze. Um, so yeah, next plan is clad this side, clad this side, and we can clad the two ends. I end up doing a lot of work on my own, um, but it's not new to me. Um, I grew up uh, an only boy, I had two sisters, but they were never really interested in coming and playing with me. So I used to end up doing a lot of stuff on my own. And so you learn how to do stuff on your own. It's all about having the right tools for the job, like cladding really is a two person job. but simply using a jack and a ladder. I can do it just as quick as two people uh, on my own. So yeah, work smart. It's one whole side panelled up and it's not looking too bad now. Um, we're just discussing how much wind it might catch. I'm pretty confident it's going to be fine. Uh, it's like 1.8 metres. There's good clearance underneath for wind to blow through. We've got a good wide centre of gravity and my tree lanes run north east to southwest and our prevailing wind is from the southwest so the wind is generally going to be blowing straight on this end and uh, i'm happy it's going to be totally fine structurally that way we get most of our storms in the winter time i'll have this parked up uh, in a sheltered spot so that's what we look like from the inside it's going to be cool now one important thing to get done now is i start to close this up access to areas um, gets very restricted so i want to go through now and do all the jobs uh, the last jobs I need to do on the inside before I clad up this side um, and that way then uh, I don't have to be in doing awkward jobs if I put on this cladding and then try to fit my uh, my protection here I'll be in underneath crawling under here It'd be just a pain so I'm going to get all these little jobs knocked out and then we can finish the cladding so main thing now is I'm going to put on my one brick I've got that with me I'm going to put on my ply up on top and I'm going to finish plumbing in my water lines. I think I'm missing, still missing a couple of fittings, but I can do some more there and get as much of that uh, stuff done in the awkward positions and then get the cladding on. Okay, you got moved along. So I've got this little protective barrier in and that'll stop chickens from jumping up. So I have it in 
full tilt there when the nest box is level down this will just hang and it means chickens can't go along there and jump up and very simply just cable tied it along to this bar here and i couldn't put cable ties in the top because it would have interfered with the egg belt so we just put some hex screws in there we've got our uh, ply in the top i mean for registration they'd probably like me to put some deep litter on this so it's probably not the end of the world that it would um reality the bird's probably never going to use up here that often anyway but uh to keep uh, everybody happy we can probably put some wood chip up there and uh, keep keep the regulators happy um one thing i stupidly did i forgot to bring my tape to put on here uh, which really i shouldn't clad this but i think what i'll be able to do because i want to get cracking i want to put on the cladding on this side i think i was just checking i can stand on the stool lean over the top and put on the tape um so two jobs i'll have to do after i have it all cladded i'll have to tape up this here so it's got a nice cushion for the eggs to hit off and then i'll run some more one break from here up to the roof but i can do that on the inside um won't be comfortable but i'll get her done so going to push on and clad this okay side number two in cladded and starting to get some bit, bit darker in here but i'm not too worried because i'm going to put my um clear plastic sheeting on the roof and you know that wood mightn't be there forever um so we'll let, i want to let in as much light as possible um because light is good it sanitizes it sanitizes um mites won't be as fond of light and it's also good for the birds because uh getting more daylight into them is important too even though in reality uh, once they sense the sunlight they're going to go outside because it's going to be uh, morning time for them um, but i'm happy with how things are progressing uh, i think the next logical step is to put on my front gable here um, the sheets i've got are square sheets so i'll put it on and they'll be square like this here and then i cut the angle off them and then i can put on my roof that'll be the next one and work my way towards the back and basically what i'm doing is i'm fitting everything nice to the front here uh, so everything's nice in the front and then that means the back is going to be kind of need some fixing up or doctoring because chances of me getting it all perfect with the back are slim but i've got this uh, barge trim which is basically like a big skirt that i can just put it all around the back so that it covers any uh, um, any problems like if we have a look i'm actually going to go around the other way because i'm thin but i'm not that thin um one side is probably further back than the other already and it's just the problem when you're putting on uh, so we can see here this one is about you know it's about a half an inch away from the pillar whereas this one here is at the pillar and that's just down to the nature when uh, i could have got these better maybe um i was just was going pretty fast at this when you're screwing in these here if i screw this in a bit further it will squeeze this in and it will make this go longer and when you go over a long distance uh, these little bits can add up um, I did have the torque setting on my drill, but it kept uh, tripping out too soon. Um, so I just turned that off and went to solid torque uh, for speed um, because I knew I wasn't, it wasn't going to kill me if I didn't meet up perfect here. My barge trim will go over this and over here and cover all that up. Um, and for the couple of euros for the barge trim, uh, rather than me being very particular all the way along, it's good enough. So good enough is perfect. Um, yeah, guys, this is going to be an awesome job when we get it done. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to start to work on the front and maybe just how I'm sticking these on. Just normal hex screws. Um, and I'm just putting, this is six foot, one at the top, one at the bottom. Now I'm putting one in every ridge um, all the way along. And I'm happy with that. It's solid. It's not vibrating. Um, if I was afraid, like here's a joint here, um, water's not going to get blown in on it. Um, if for some reason somewhere some of the joints maybe there was some water i can't even find the joints so that good there's one there um if there was some water getting in then i would just come along and stick some more screws in to close up the joints um because i've only overlapped it one groove um too expensive to be overlapping for two or three grooves what i mean is when i put the tin on uh, can i see an example here uh, so 
one sheet ends here and the other sheet starts here um, or some if you wanted to be really fancy you would have one sheet end here have one whole double overlap and then go but uh, yeah um, I'm on a budget so that's not happening today uh, yeah happy out I was just uh, fastening on this first sheet and how I do these end ones is I screw it on with just two screws I go up and I mark where I need to cut it uh, because there's only two screws holding I fold it out like a book I cut it three quarters of the way and I put it back in I screw on this side I take out the two original screws I fold this side out and I cut this and I screw it back on that way I'm not up and down and up and down and while I was putting on that I was just thinking to get up the roof sheets I should probably put them up now uh, when I can push them up on this nice smooth uh, bit of box section that's painted because um, if I try and put them up over the top I'm going to scrape the paint off them, either going up there. I can't actually get around the back that easy, so I'm just looking. It's easier now, push the egg mobile back. I'm going to load up all the roof sheets up there. I'll put them up in one pile. Uh, I'll move them towards the back, and that way then I can sheet towards the back, and then I'll finish this off. Um, just planning, uh, being a bit more prepared saves uh, extra work. I can slip these up here, just lean them up against it, and then give them a push up. And then I'll go up there and arrange them down the back, and they'll be ready to go when I want to roof. Okay, there we have it. Looking like a proper house now. I mean, aesthetics, it mightn't be the prettiest wagon, but it's going to definitely be an awesome home for the birds. Um, I have just lifted the roof sheets up there. I still, I got to get up there and stick them down, square them all up and trim them. My, uh, my clear cladding came as a standard length, so I got to cut that to size as well. Now it's starting to get pretty dark in the back here. But I'm actually, it'll actually be pretty good. Um, I open my door. Can you imagine that timber wasn't there? A lot of light would come in. Um, then we also have, see I've hooked up one of these ones. So that'll be for collecting eggs. So I'm really happy with that. There's loads of light. So we can actually probably grate a lot of the eggs as we're collecting. Um, and I don't have the other lights wired up yet. It's a bit fittery for me to change it. But uh, yeah, my other egg mobile is pitch black inside. I like this one. There's a bit of light comes in because it's so high off the ground. And uh, yeah, we're getting there. So I got to get up, get the roof on. Then we're just down to the back door here, or sorry, the back door, the back of it. And that's kind of like I was saying earlier, this is where you got to make everything look tidy because uh, you just work all the problems back to here and then you just sort them out when they're here. And I also have to figure out what I'm doing with my door. Uh, so I'll just make all that up as I go along. Um, people will ask, like, uh, uh, you haven't put any trim on the front. <clears throat> all I do here, um, like everything costs money, guys. So on the front, you can see, I just use a screw to pull the sheet right in. And I mean, a bit of rain can get in there. It's not going anywhere. It's just gonna go there and run down and run off. And the same over here. Um, it's just, they're both tight up. So there's no rain actually blowing in. I can only get there and roll down. So I won't need any edging on this side. Um, my other egg mobiles <clears throat> were always short of the meter. So they were like uh, 4.8 meters long. And I always knew I had 200 mil of, of tin to spare to bend round at the back. Uh, I knew this one was eight meters and these tins cover a meter. So I knew I wasn't gonna have much grace. So that's why I ordered the barge for the back. Um, but people will say, oh, about ventilation, um, it's going to get so hot in there. I mean, it's, uh, you need to ask yourself, what is the function of this machine? Um, this machine is for the birds to sleep in and for them to have somewhere to lay their egg. Um, if it's, we, we live in Ireland, we don't really get hot days. We get more wet days um, and it's, they stand in underneath it. If it's really hot, they're actually hanging out on the ground and underneath it in the shade of it. Um, they're never in here. Uh, so people will be saying, oh, it's black, that's going to make it hotter, whatever. If you're in a country and you're afraid it's going to get so hot, well, you need to hook up some fans to your egg mobile or figure something out. Um, but realistically, sit and watch your chickens. Um, they spend very little time in here, only at night, really. I'm just up on the roof here, uh, putting in them three quarters of the way through here. And I just want to talk about... This is clear cladding. 
it's not ideal stuff because it's it's quite like you cannot walk on this um definitely not i can walk on these ones um i cannot walk on these and a trick what i'm doing is i'm overlapping the tin on top of this on both sides so on this side the heavy cladding goes on top and the same on this side and you want to put it i'm screwing it everywhere i can so that uh this is supported as well as possible um because it is quite flimsy but as long as it's well secured and the one can't get in under to take it off it'll be totally fine it's absolutely great for letting in light and that's why i'm choosing to put i can only really put three on it i can't you want to limit where you put this stuff because it's not that strong so i don't want to put one on either end there's eight sheets long long um and three is the maximum i can get in uh while not compromising any of the uh, stability of the roof and that's what it looks like with the lights on for the birds um, so there's loads of light in here um, and this will be really important for getting enticing them in at night and i find i need to use lights when we get closer to the winter um, when it's dark at like 7 38 in the morning birds want to lay but they can't see where the nest boxes are so they will start to lay on the floor um, so it's good that the lights come on a little bit earlier so they can see where to go um, and I suppose if the birds don't want to be bothered by the lights, they can always go up to the next uh, door for the first floor because um, it'll be dark up there. But uh, getting there, I'm going to call it a day right now and I'll come back tomorrow and finish out this back wall. Okay, our roof is on um, all the way along. Uh, just working on the back here. Got two sheets on. And I've lifted the barge term onto the roof. And I'm just trying to figure out what's going to happen at the door here. Inside. Um, it's not too bad with light, actually. If I... Uh, that's with our LEDs on. But it's starting to look homely if you were a chicken. Um, I've just got to figure out now the door's a little bit awkward I didn't want to make the door one meter wide so I'm gonna to have to cut out this sheet here and make it I'm gonna to have to have a little piece that goes on here and then another sheet on the door so that uh, the door will cover to here I'm also gonna to have to put on a little something up here uh, to fix that as well but we're slowly getting there Okay, got the back of her pretty much closed up. I've got one gap up here, which I think I'm going to put some of this clear stuff on. But in order to do that, I need to put an extra support so that it actually, I don't want rain hitting off it. It has to come out past this here. So if a rain hits off it, the rain comes down and runs down here, as opposed to going down the inside. Fitted a little latch. It's actually going to be a two-handed latch to close it because it's dead snug. There's no rattles or anything off it. So to close it again, you gotta really push in. I don't know if I can do it with one hand. I, I can't. Um, you really gotta push in here. Um, super easy with two hands. And that's gonna be our door. We just need to put uh, a little, uh, some sort of rope or something on it so it doesn't go flying open with the wind. And some sort of little catch. And happy days. So I'm going to just put this piece of trim that you see up the top. I'm gonna. I gotta weld on a bar first to hold my clear piece and then once I put on my clear piece I'll drop down that barge trim over the top, put that on and put a bit of barge trim up this corner here and that's that sealed up. Then this corner here I think I'm actually happy with because the door's here. There's going to be a little gap there, I'm not too worried, not much water's going to get in there and I just close this up tight so that'll be fine. Um, when I'm going to weld this bracket on here, I have a couple other welding jobs to do. I got to make a mountain bracket for the solar panel and the camera to go up there. And I got to make some sort of step here. But I don't want the step to be fixed uh, because it's quite, I want maybe two steps. So we're going to put like a step here and a step here. But I want it to hinge so that it can, if we're driving along and it hits a piece of ground, it just fo folds out of the way. Uh, so I'm going to figure that out and get these couple of welding jobs done. Okay, decided easiest and best thing to do was to go for a fixed step sitting on here and then I'll just make a mobile step 
uh, out of something. Um, it'll be something similar to this uh, size and height so that we have a three-way step up and then when we're moving I'll just chuck this on top and it'll move with us and then throw it back down. Um, the other concept I was trying to come up with was just too convoluted to be actually strong enough. Um, was we we're going to end up too far out here so when we stood on it I wasn't going to be able to make it the bracket strong enough here. Um, this is a much stronger job. It's going to last much longer. Inside we're looking sweet. Um, it's just an old box I had um, that I was just testing with. I'm going to build a new box for this egg mobile because there's a lot more functions in it. Mm. Um, we're almost there. Um, the last kind of nitty gritty stuff that I got to do. I put some... How far down did I get? You can see in here, that's as far as I got. So I got my hotspot tape. I thought I had two rolls in stock. It turns out I had only one, so I had to order another one. So I still got to finish that. And that's why I haven't put on the cover here yet. But well, these little jobs won't take too long to do. I got to put in my feeding troughs. I got to fit this last stick that I just got. Put in my feeding troughs uh, on this level. I got to put in my four more roosts up here and I'm going to be putting some feeding troughs up here as well and that'll be that all done I got to make when I cover this down here I got to put a cover across this as well and I think that'll be us done inside I obviously I got to put in my battery my fence energizer and my control box which um, I will do I'm not so worried that'll be pretty easy to do um, I'm pushing hard in here now I want to get done with everything in here by tomorrow evening yeah. Um, I also fitted this. This is a big U-bolt, which goes right onto the chassis. So if I want to pull it backwards with anything, I want to hook onto it. Can hook on there and pull it backwards. Um, what else have I been up to? I've made some brackets here. This bracket here. This bracket is going to hold the solar panel. Um, you probably can't see how I'm going to do it, but when I get it, I got to paint all these and. Let them dry, paint them again tomorrow, and then I'll install them after that. Uh, but that's going to be holding my solar panel, and the panel's going to actually sit on it like this here, uh, so it can tilt forward and back. And uh, This bit up here, this is going to be for a camera, so I can have a 360 view around the Eggmobile, and that's all going to go right up there. It's going to stick right up there. And this other piece of steel is a bracket for above the back door, so that piece of steel needs to get painted and then I need to install it uh, when we close the door it's a bit loud. Uh, that piece of steel goes across here and it enables me then to screw this onto it and it pushes this here out so that any rain coming down goes down the outside of the door and then I'm going to be pretty much ready to roll this thing out um, if I need to do those last few jobs I do need to put my water regulator on but uh, I can take it up to the farm and I can do that stuff up at the farm. I'm not too fussed. Once I get this bracket here on, I can then stick on. This is still sitting here. I can stick this on, stick on another bit of trim here. And that's done. Ah. One last thing I'm working on. This is a motor I got for my egg belt. And I just cut in some sprockets here now. So I got to try and play about with these sprockets and get a gearing system that works. Uh, this guy goes on the shaft. I actually need to drill and tap this so I can get it to fit on the key. If you look, this shaft has a key on it. I couldn't get a sprocket this size with a key in it. So I need to put a little screw down into this so that it holds it in place. And then I need to mount another one on the egg belt. I've got a couple of different gear sizes so I can get a different ratio if I want to go faster or slower and hopefully I'll be able to figure something out. I think this motor should power it. I'm not 100% sure. There's only one way to find out. This is an essential. I've got the manual system there, so I can use that, but I'd like to try and get this cone too. Okay, I'm just setting up my water setup because I've got, got a delivery in with my pressure reduction valve. So this is just a very simple uh, piece of kit that can you, means you can adjust the pressure of water. And there's a little gauge on here so you can set what pressure you want it in. I guess. Um, and so I've got a direction that it flows through so the water's got to come in this side and go out this side. This is actually a three-quarter fitting but they give you these little uh, inserts to make it half inch. So I've just put in. So this is going to be my 
Jesse wants me to play with her. Do you want me to throw the rag? You ready? Go get it. Um, so this is going to be my connection here. And now I need to take this off. And I'm just using this as flexible 15mm uh, half inch pipe. And I just use brass fittings quickly. So uh, there's going to be two places in the egg mobile I need to hook up to. I need to hook up to the row of nipple drinkers on the high on the first floor. And I need to hook up. So it's probably actually going to sit out the front like this here. Yeah. And I'll put a T on here. T off that way and a T off that way. And jobs are good. And then I'll just have to be a little bit awkward for setting it but I'll only be setting it once and I can check it every now and again for pressure. So I've just put a, a valve on the end and you can see I've just hooked up the hose here and I'm trying to set the pressure. So I've set the pressure way down low. I'm aiming for less than one bar and it's working perfect. And then I can let the pressure off. How I was doing it is if I Open this up, uh, it'll be reading no pressure. And this is the perfect shape I want. So that's gonna to go to the bottom deck. This is gonna to go to the top deck and this is gonna go right at the hitch. And that's where I'll hook on. Job's good and just gotta fit it into the egg mobile now. It feels great to be nearly finished with this project. I mean, this, this egg mobile has been in my head for the last two years. Um, I've been designing every detail in my head, going over it and over it, and uh, finally I was hoping to do this project last winter, and I just didn't have the time, with too much going on, didn't have the money, etc. Uh, usual problems when you're starting a small farm, but uh, it's great to actually see it come out of my head and be a reality now. And yeah, I can't wait to get it up on the farm, uh, get it certified and get it ready for the season.